Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Once again, we want to welcome everyone that is listening to this episode of Epic Conquerors podcast. Remember, there are no failures, only outcomes. And as long as we learn something, you'll always succeed, right? Ooh, I like that, Chad. That's good. <laughs> so we're continuing our series on turning the feet into a win. Mama J is going to share some wisdom that she has learned through her 50 years of ministry. Whoa. <laughs> it been that much already? E. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it goes yeah. by so fast, right? Right. Yeah. So fast. But yeah. I'm sure I'm sure there's a there's a wealth of wisdom that uh, you're going to share and pass on to our Epic Conquerors community over the this series and all the other series that are still to come. And that would be my goal. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll kick off, uh, Mom and Jay. We're uh, asking you. I mean, we just had some conversations with uh, two of our colleagues, Ray and and, and uh, Lee. And it was amazing just to hear from their perspective with regards to the conversations around def- uh, turning defeat into a win. And I was wondering, what were some of the takeaways that you got from those conversations? Maybe just you know, a couple of highlights that you that you picked up when we were discussing that. Okay, well, they may not have dropped those episodes to listen to them prior to this one, so I don't know if they'll have a relating point. But I just think what was interesting to me in the two episodes that we've already done now on this series and the ones that we're going to be doing in the near future here on it is that we all deal with defeat. I mean, we all like to think we will never have to deal with that, but we all have to deal with it. And starting from a young age, I mean, we learn that when you play games, even as a kid, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. And somehow that's okay. We understand that's just how life works. But wow, when it comes to life situations, so often we allow the defeats that we experience in life to define us, and that's where it gets really uh, not a good, healthy thing for us. So that's what we want to talk about with our Epic Conquerors community right now is turning these defeats into a win so that they don't take us out for the count, but that we're able to do something positive and powerful out of those seeming devastating times. And it's and it's always those times, Mom and Jay, that uh, when when we get stuck and stuck in that in that uh, frame of mind and we feel defeated, you know, those are those are the the times where you know we make all these bad decisions and we do things. So it's so imperative that we learn how to take those moments and those states that we find ourselves in and turn them around, like yeah. turn them into a win. Yeah, because the life situations that we all deal with at some level or another if not in our own personal life, within our immediate family or friendship circles, we all know people that have gone through similar things that I'm going to share in just a second, or we ourselves have gone through it. But somehow, how that works in our minds, I don't know for sure, but we need to realize it's not defining us. Like if you've gone through a bankruptcy, that's not the end of the world. If you've gone through a divorce, if you've been fired from a job, if you lost a limb, if you have a debilitating disease, I mean, tragedy, or you go into retirement and you don't know who you are anymore, or if you're incarcerated or you have an unexpected loss of a loved one, all those kind of life situations, somehow, seemingly as adults, we let them define us. And so then that doesn't give us the platform upon which we can build success in our life because that's always constantly pulling us down that baggage. Why, why do you think we allow these worldly things to define us like that, Mama J? Like, I mean, what is the, what is the, like the reason that like, I mean, we all know that we've already got the victory, but you know, these, these things come into our lives and before we know it, we become defined by exactly what you just spoke about, by the tragedies and the, you know, the fact that we're getting older and, you know, we're going through different processes in our life and we may not have as, you know, be in the same situation or the job that we want, but you know, this is something that we, this is something that's real. I mean, this happens. So I think we set ourselves up for that, Chad, when we have expectations that are maybe not correct expectations. And so when those expectations don't come to pass, like how we imagined or hoped or wanted them to in our lives, 
then somehow we take that as a ding to ourselves personally with our own self-worth and make that as a deficit in our own personal life rather than realizing that, you know, life just happens. The sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Life happens to everyone. But to recognize then, don't take it as a personal ding to your own self-worth because you're created in the image of God and he loves you and you're beloved by him. So switching that around to realize, yes, this is just a situation that happened in my life, but it does not define who I am because once we allow that to define us and then we live in that, whoo, I tell you, that can really take a toll and some people never really come out of that. It turns into depression. It turns into a loss of hope and desire. And I mean, it just takes you down. So yeah, without, without that hope, you can't pull through it, right? It's the hope yeah. that pulls you through it. Yeah. It, the, the problem is like you were saying, the judgment is what const- like when we have this judgment based on, on these outcomes that we've already perceived of how we want them to, to turn out. Yeah. We judge them and then we judge ourselves. That's what strangles our spiritual growth, right? It strangles us. And before you know it, like we slowly slipping away from the source who we know yeah. is, is Christ, right? Spiritually and, and now, emotionally, it takes a toll. Yeah. Yeah. Now suddenly we rely on ourselves. And then once we get into that situation, we, <laughs> it's not we, good. <laughs> we all know where that takes us. I mean, yeah. that's a slippery slope. But I wanted to go into the conversation and, uh, and, and dig into what you wrote in your blog. Um, about your father, Mama Jay, and uh, <clears throat> obviously I've heard heard parts of the story before. Um, I knew that your dad, Ernie, was a boxing coach, but the rest of the story was foreign to me. And wow, how fascinating that was to read that! And just you know, if you can share with your audience how your father, who you know, who perceived that his life was you know was Over, defeated, yeah, and defeated like yeah. he was defeated based on what happened to him but how that actually turned around into an amazing victory and how you helped so many, so many people. How did that play out in your life? And, you know, today when you look back on those, on that situation, you know, maybe you can take that and that story and just kind of elaborate on it for us. Sure. I think just hearing dad talk about these experiences that I'm going to share in a moment has really helped to define how I've been able to, um, walk my life out because of the things that I learned from listening to him share his story and how he turned that around. But my dad was always like a champion kind of a guy. I mean, he was a jitterbug champion. <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he loved to tap dance and he could just do a thing. And he was a boxer. I mean, he was a professional boxer and he lost the championship of the United States by one technical point, which could have been a judge's opinion. He could have been paid off to make that judgment. You know, I mean, there's all those kind of what ifs. And it that's was devastating. devastating. That's oh. devastating. I mean, one point. Wow. One point, you know, and, and so here you are evenly matched with your opponent and then the final round and you gave it your all and you felt like you won that thing and then to have it by just a technical point. So that really was devastating for him. And then, of course, the war broke out. So he went in to uh, do that and became a paratrooper. And um, they went to go behind enemy lines the day before D-Day. And as he was jumping out of the airplane, a sniper bullet from the ground. And I just watched a movie on this a couple of weeks ago where they talked about the snipers that were shooting these guys out of the sky and they were showing pictures of the guys. And I was like, oh my gosh, that could have been my dad up there. Wow. But anyway, the sniper bullet actually hit him as he was dropping down from that airplane and uh, hit the hand grenade in his pocket. And as a result, that hand grenade blew up and he just lit up like a firework display right there in that midnight sky. And um, when he got on the ground, a medic found him and took him to the Red Cross. And he ended up in the hospital for a full year in a full body plaster cast. We don't remember what those are now. But back in the day, those things weighed like a ton. And it just had a couple little holes in there for you to do your business. And that was it. I mean, his whole body was encapsulated in that cast. Do 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 you have a visual of that? I mean, can you remember that Yeah, as a kid? I can picture him as he would share the story yeah. so many different times with people. And so it just became something that was a part of our growing up experience to know the things that dad had to contend for. So 
yeah. being a boxer and being a professional athlete and being in great shape and being able to take anybody out. He says boxers of today are hamburgers, he would say, because he used to have to fight like 10 times a day just in the neighborhood in those days. But anyway, so in other words, he was tough. And uh, after you're in a full body cast, you lose your muscles and everything just is it's wimpy, right? So they sent him to a farm to regain that uh, strength back. And that's where he found the Lord, which is really wonderful. But the point of the story with our topic today is that dad was just devastated because he felt lost after the war. He, now he had this limp in his leg because the grenade blew outward. It was flushed to his leg. So it just put a hole in his leg, whereas the doctor said if there'd been any air between the grenade and his leg, it would have blown in all directions and he would have blown up to bits. So the mercy of God to keep his life, uh, I'm really appreciative of that because I wasn't even born yet at that time. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that limp in his leg always reminded him that he could never go back and contend for that title, which is, was his hope when he got out of the military. So then he met my mom, but he was just kind of broken at that point because he felt defeated and defined by those circumstances that were out of his control, not only in the boxing arena, but by having himself blown up in the air, you know, like that. I mean, that was quite a powerful thing um, to try to overcome that. Well, I mean, and also when you have this, I mean, obviously it was out of his control that he got, you know, the war yeah, broke both out. both of those things, right? yeah. And then you're still going into the war thinking, when I come out of this, I'm going to go back and redeem myself. Yeah. I'm going to win that title that I, you know, lost by one point or was, you know. Right. So close, point. Yeah. So you have that and then suddenly to get that just completely ripped out of you again. I mean, that's, I can understand how that must feel. Well, yeah. And if you realize too, he was like 26 years old at that time. So he's still in his prime and he still had all that energy built into him because my dad had a lot of energy, but uh, it just seemed like what chance is there? That's all I know is how to box. You know, that's, yeah. that's my only skill set. And, and I think a lot of people today go through that same thing. Like you're saying, I mean, you know, they lose their job or they lose their significant other or they lose a relationship and everything that they have is tied to that. Yeah. And they feel that same depression, defeat and, you know, so. Yeah. You don't know how to reinvent yourself, right? It just feels like life is over. And uh, my mom said to him, well, Ernie, if you can't be a champion, make a champion. And so then dad shifted his focus then. And he, all of my growing up years, we always had a boxing school in the backyard or he had a brick and mortar boxing school and he was always working with young boys and helping them. And he just really taught us and drilled into us all of our life to root for the underdog <laughs> because apparently that's what he felt like. And he just needed that cheerleader of my mom to give him purpose. And so we always understood that to cheer one another on because we all go through life, things that are very difficult. And if we know somebody's in our corner that cares about us and is rooting for us, that can, be the catalyst that can move us forward. Well, and it's powerful because you said that when he went to this farm, that's when he found the Lord, right? Yeah, that was a wonderful thing. And it was, it was that way you met your mom? No, when he came back from that uh, time of working on the farm, then he was back in his hometown and he was driving in a car with a friend of his and they saw this, two young girls walking across the bridge and mom had a red dress on. And my dad said, boy, if I ever get a chance to meet that girl, I'm going to ask her to marry me. And they just thought that was a joke. And then a few nights later, she turned up at the same place that he was and she had that same red dress on. And so he introduced himself to her a couple months later, they got married on her 20th birthday because he didn't want to marry a teenager because he was a veteran. He was 26 <laughs> years old. So, well, you see, and then look how amazing the Lord is, right? He yeah, connects, it's powerful. He makes a path for these things to happen. So, wow, that's a, that's that's great. So, Mama Jay, he so your dad became obviously he found the Lord, and then he came back. You got married to your mom. He was, you know, started. Your mom helped him redirect his life. Yeah, he found a new purpose in you know now helping other younger. Yeah, boxers and teaching them how to, you know, obviously get back in the ring and how to them fight. So, I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Is to change the narrative. That's so right. Change that's the right. switch, like switch, switch the whole script around. That's you know, you right. Yourself, but yeah. find something that's going to drive you and pull you out of that that state of defeat, whatever that might be. 
Yeah, because of his energy level and just the kind of charismatic type of guy he was, he went into selling life insurance and he did really well on that. He was in the million dollar round table and things like that as a salesperson, which in those days was a lot of money. If you sold that many policies, it's a lot different today, the standards, but back then, so they wanted to send him out to California. We lived in Indiana at the time. And so he came out to California and we drove through all the desert. Of course, I was just like eight years old at the time. And he goes, who am I going to sell insurance to all these rabbits? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> Mom, once again, had to say, but Ernie, you know, just hold on. <laughs> you will do well, you know. And then they ended up in Southern California where we lived and dad did really well. But he always, not only in insurance did well, but then he always had these boys that he was helping. And so he was very fulfilled in that way. And as a result, hundreds of people received encouragement from his enthusiasm for life and uh, I just think he took the lemons that life handed him and he would just made a whole lot of lemonade <laughs> I love that I love that and I'm sure your mom was there as well ministering to the boys too so a lot of them probably came to know the Lord while they're learning how to box yeah well mom taught him how to do the speed bag dad said she had a wicked left hook I said how do you know dad <laughs> Oh man, it's so funny. I was reading a great article that was, uh, and it was dealing with, it was, the whole article was built around how to change your state. Mm. Uh, that's really what it boils down to. Like change your story, change your state. You know, when you slip into depression or you're just feeling like, you know, so many of us do at some point you're feeling defeated. And the article was mentioning, it just had a, an out, had an outline of a couple of questions that you need to ask yourself when you get stuck in, in this depression or whatever you want to call it, you know, this, state of defeat and it says ask yourself like what am i happy for in my life right now when you start redirecting and taking it off there what am i excited about in my life right now what am i proud about in my life right now what am i grateful about in my life right now so and it goes on it says what am i you know what am i enjoying in my life right now and what am i committed to in my life right now. So it's really just a bunch of questions that help redirecting, you. isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Redirecting. It's such a key. You know, take we the enemy wants you to remove your focus from the Lord and what he has for you because he's already given you the victory. And all he's trying to do is redirect your your thinking to, well, look at me and how I failed and I can't do this anymore. And you know, I just don't know what to do. But you have to learn how to change it. Like your dad yeah. did. change yeah. the whole story around it. But, you know, if dad left to himself, he would have stayed in that stew, I think. But because he, my mom was able to speak to him, and that's why we really need one another in the body of Christ, especially, to speak to one another and believe in one another and cheerlead for one another. Because we need to hear that from other people, you know, that they believe in us. And we know God believes in us, but sometimes we also know that people still believe in us. And then that helps to move us forward out of that funk, if you will. I know in Micah, it says, chapter 7, verse 8, though I fall, I will rise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. And I think when we allow the light of Christ to shine in our hearts anew through people or through his word or whatever, that gives us that hope and strength to begin to move forward once again and, and find new purpose and recreate ourselves if we have to. Pivoting is not a bad thing. <laughs> pivot, pivot, and pivot until you find that lane that you can run in and really enjoy what you're doing with your life. And in your in your blog, you if you you reference uh, Proverbs twenty four sixteen, which is amazing too. It says, "For the righteous fall seven times, they rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes." So, I mean, that's what it really boils down to. We look at the story about King David, and we go through so many of them in the Bible. We yeah. see how many times how many times they were defeated. I yeah, mean, and when it uses that number seven times, it doesn't just mean seven times, because one time I thought, okay, this is six and a half for me, so this is going to be the last <laughs> one. But the, the inference there is unlimited time. So even if we fall unlimited times, we will rise again. But the wicked stumble, and that word stumble doesn't mean like they just stub their big toe. It means they literally fall away and are no more when calamity strikes. So when we know we're the righteousness of God in Christ, we can realize that, you know, we will just make the pivot and turn in faith and hope in God and let others be in our corner and work with us. 
we will rise again and we will come into that epic conqueror mentality that everything's possible in Christ. <laughs> Mama J, so if you, and I'm sure after 50 years of ministry, you never ever find yourself in a state of depression or defeat. <laughs> if you do, you know, what are some of the things that you do to help like pivot your thinking and change your narrative and just, you know, because it's all about timing, right? The sooner you can do that, the better for you. So what do you, what do you do? And perhaps you can, you know, give us some insight that our our community can get some wisdom from you on how to change their state. Well, many years ago, one of the things that really stuck out to me, and I think of it a lot throughout my lifetime, and it's the place where David, obviously, as you mentioned just a little bit ago, he also went through some horrendous experiences that could have definitely been feeling defeat for him, like when his brother sold him and to slavery, so to speak, and, you know, his pit to the palace journey. There were many times he was betrayed and, you know, all the things that he went through, he could have felt very, very defeated. But the Bible says that he took himself by the nap of the neck and he pulled himself up by his bootstraps, so to speak, is kind of a terminology we would use back in my day. But anyway, he pulled himself up by the nap of his neck and he said, soul, bless the Lord. And so I always think of that, you know, when everything just feels like it's tumbling all around me, I just take myself figuratively, (laughs) literally by the nap of the neck, pull myself up and I say, soul, bless the Lord. And then I kind of start to laugh because it's kind of a comical thing to do. But what it does is, like you said earlier, it begins to shift what my perspective is and place it on the Lord that I'm going to rise again. I will be victorious because the greater one lives in us and he's going to see us through to victory. Mm-hmm. And I know Mama J, you always, <clears throat> you always tell me it's not about the pity party, right? It's about the praise party. So I'm sure that's mm-hmm. something that you love to do too. It's like when you feel count it all joy, have a party yeah. right in the middle of your difficult times, go out and get an ice cream, man. <laughs> that's it. that's, uh, go get a balloon, <laughs> go do something that makes you feel like a party attitude and just celebrate. Cause you make the devil crazy when you do that. Because he thinks he's got you, you know, where he wants you, down in the doldrums, down in the mud with him. But we say, know what? I'm going to rise up because I'm going to have victory in Jesus' name, and I'm going to celebrate it right now. And you just confuse the devil big time when you do that. So that's, yeah, the other thing I love to do. Because it's always doing, it's it's always those times that you never really want to do it, right? It's like when you're feeling down and depressed, you don't really want to jump up and praise and sing and do that. Go so, buy a balloon. Yeah, or buy a balloon or go get an ice cream. You <laughs> there just, you go. You know, you just want to sit at home and, and feel depressed. Have the whole carton, you know. <laughs> but when you do that, it changes everything. And that's why I it feel, does. So, I feel, you know, for me, the changing of your state and, and that comes through, like you said, it can come through prayer, it can come through jumping up and down and, and shouting Jesus. It can come through, you know, singing songs, whatever it is. But it's so important that you do that and you do it yeah. as soon as possible because the longer you stay in that, and we've all experienced it, I'm definitely guilty of that. The longer you allow that to fester, the harder it becomes to get back to we get back to the plumb line, like you yeah. were saying. Kind of like quicksand, isn't it, Chad? It just sucks you down. <laughs> Very much so. And and again, like you always, I mean, and it's important to be in um, in a group or in, you know, in, in a community or like this community where you can reach out to people or where people can hold you accountable because, you know, we can hide for so long and I know that very well, but eventually, you know, those people that hold you accountable, those people that love you and that are there for you will come and grab you. And when they do that, you know, you change your state. So, yeah. Yeah. I think something that I wrote in the blog there at the end, it really touches me a lot. It says, take the lemons in your life and open up a lemonade stand. Because (laughs) people are thirsty for what you've learned in life so that they can be refreshed and rejuvenated to keep on keeping on. Because we know the battle is real, but we also know the victory is assured. So if we will make some lemonade and give other people a drink out of that, which we've learned in life. It can help them go the next mile. And when you do that, you're also blessing yourself in return. And you're going to find yourself able to go an extra couple of miles because you reached out to bless someone else. And that sentence is so powerful. Those words, I mean, they really ring true. The battle is real. Obviously we know that, but the victory is assured. If you can, if we can stand on that and at any given time when we feel down or depressed, we can just recite that 
and use that as an affirmation and just yes. keep saying that and voicing that out, that alone can change your state. So that's definitely something, you know, Epic Community, you know, think about that, write that down, keep it handy. You know, if you, when you, as soon as you feel, it's kind of like when you feel that cold coming on, you just go and get that medication immediately. Same thing. Speak that over your life right out the gate and just change your state. You know, the yeah. battle is real, but the victory is assured. Yeah. And, and that's why we have every episode, Chad, our uh, epic power affirmation, because those declarations that we make are things that can alter our position mentally, which then will affect us emotionally, which will then affect our outward behavior. So what we're using for this series that we're doing right now is the power affirmation of I am an overcomer because that needs to come so far down into our spirit and our emotional uh, psyche, if you will, that it just rises up within us. The Holy Spirit will bring it up to the surface when we are feeling pummeled and we can say, no, but I'm an overcomer in Jesus' name. And that can begin to shift things for us to kind of get some fresh wind under our wings. And I think that's a good point right there too, is, is take the, as we go through these different series and we have these different power affirmations, write them down and keep them handy because they are, they are, they, 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 you speak them over your life. They change your state. They change your attitude. So, you know, keep a little yeah, note. Write them out, put them on your bathroom mirror. So you see it in the morning. <laughs> exactly. And when you were, when you were talking about that, I just had this, I am an overcomer, this, this visual, visual picture of, you know, this boxer, like Rocky, you know, being knocked down in the bot in the ring, but, you know, just looking up and seeing Jesus there and going like saying that I am an overcomer and just pulling yourself up because that's really what it feels like sometimes. Yeah. Yep. It feels like you've been, you know, knocked out. You're down you- for the count, but you find some of that strength in there and you just begin to rise up. That's it. Yeah. And that's, then the devil knows he's done. <laughs> He lost and he truly is defeated. He's been, he totally was defeated. That's why he tries to put that on us, his defeat, but we don't have to walk with that. That belongs to him. He is defeated. We are the victors in Christ. And so we can just neener, neener, neener to him because you know, <laughs> you're not going to put that on me this time, dude. I'm going to go out and have a party and celebrate because my victory is assured in Christ. It might not look like it, it might not feel like it but I know it's mine in Jesus' name. So I am an overcomer. So we're going to do our drum roll. And on the count of three, we're going to say it all together. One, two, three. I am an overcomer. (laughs) And then our epic spotlight weapon that we like to do. What would you think it would be for this episode, Chad? What would you choose? Hmm. I would have to say mine would be praise. Mm. Praise when you when you're down and out, praise when you feel like, like you've been knocked out and you're yeah, on the celebrate. canvas. Celebrate, yeah. Just get up and praise. I mean, yeah. sing songs, jump around. Yeah. You know, just celebrate. Just like you said, celebrate the fact that the victory is real, but That's right. your victory is assured. And celebrate God's goodness. You know, we're his child. And so he's not going to leave us down, you know, down there. He's going to lift us up. But in the process of that lifting, we're going to learn some things. And he's going to take advantage of that to form and shape us into the image of his son, Jesus, so nothing is lost. So we can just be encouraged in that, that God is working in us and through us in the process. But ultimately, we are coming out as a total victor because there's no way we can be defeated Mm-mm, not as a child of God, no way. No way. And that's why it's always great to go through the scriptures, right? Because yeah. you see that, you know, sometimes we forget about it, but if you go back and you read through all the stories through David's life and you read through Paul's life and all of the, all the rest of them, these are, these were put there for a reason. So that that's we can right. put strength on the fact that even though they went through some of the most horrific things, I mean, in their life, things that we today can't even imagine yes. at the end of the day, they were victorious. That's right. That's right. And even if it seems like, you know, well, sometimes somebody might say, well, but they were believing God to be healed or whatever, but then they died. Well, the thing of it is the results of things is not what defines us. It's our faith that pleases God. So as long as we are in faith, trusting God through the situation 
And if a situation in life, like an illness or something, does lead to death, that's the ultimate victory right there. You just graduated to glory. <laughs> it's like, oh, my goodness. I mean, it's like, yes, this is what the whole earth is groaning for, right? Yep. For the sons and the daughters of God to come forward in, in all of that. And so even that, death, where is your sting? It's gone mm-hmm. because Christ triumphed over all of that. He said, it is finished. And when he said it's finished, he wasn't talking about that he, he's all done, so now he's finished with doing anything else. What he was saying is, it is finished. I paid the price for everything. The devil has no authority. Now all of it belongs to me. I'm giving it to my kids, and I'm just getting started. <laughs> and that's how I feel in life. I'm just getting started. No matter what my age is, I'm just getting started, right? Because there's so much more to do. Uh, for the glory of God. And so we just keep on keeping on, encourage one another, and we will run our race and we shall cross that finish line with victory. And that's, and that's important. We will run our race. I mean, because, you know, to live, to live is Christ and to die yeah. is gain at the end of the that's day. That's right. So, I mean, that's we right. know where we're going. We're going to, we're going to, that's right. to, you know, to our father's house and that's going to be that's amazing. Right. But like yeah. you said, while we, yeah, we have a job to do. That's and obviously right. we, have, we have to go through these different phases in our life. Yeah, but we it happens to everybody. Yeah. Everyone deals with this. This is the refining, the refining wheel, like the potter's wheel that we're on, yeah. where we get all the little rough edges smoothed out. And no matter, what, no matter what, what, what is happening, the one thing we have to realize is that you just have to go through the process. But go through the process with hope, knowing that at the other side, the victory is waiting for you. That's right. So celebrate early and get your faith on. (laughs) Go for it. (laughs) Uh, It makes life so much more enjoyable when we can do that. So this has been an awesome episode. We just thank all of our community for subscribing to our podcast and to share it with your friends and all of that. It's such a wonderful blessing to know that we can have these conversations and encourage one another with our life struggles and issues to realize that, you know, we all go through everything, but we can all become victorious in everything as well because of Jesus Christ in us. So we just want to kind of say ciao for now. And thanks for, again, as I said, uh, listening to our podcast, but also joining our Facebook group, Epic Conquerors. Find us there. We would love to see you in that community as well. So what's your parting shot, Chad? My parting shot is the battle is real, but the victory is assured. All right. So, <laughs> I like no it. What's going on in your life? Jump up, have a party, call some friends over, get some balloons, get some ice cream. There you go. <laughs> Make it. the devil sweat. Yeah. Because exactly. <laughs> he's a loser. He's All a loser. right, everybody. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Bye bye. New Testament Evangelism and Discipleship Training, The Master's Class. Online courses created for 21st century believers. Experience His joy and a front row seat to miracles. Start today. Eternity matters.